Hello, well, back to tuning into today's second video, it will be 30 day European outlook for today's second video. So, as well as on Tuesday, this is your extended EC 40 slash 42 day for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. And I shall get to that for you in a moment, just to say that first. The video we say was our 6 a.m. UK world forecast, and it got 10 to 14 there with all other regular features coming up for you later on uh, this afternoon as well. So, please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for Gav's weather beats. Right, let's start off with the situation across Europe. Uh, for this week, for week one, which is the 30th of October, 6th of November. So, uh, low pressure is dominating the weather across much of Europe, actually. So, in the north and in the west of Europe, we see a big area of low pressure from off the Atlantic. We have got a bit of blocking up towards Greenland and Iceland, which is bringing cooler air into, or colder air, into northern parts of Europe, perhaps. Um, but overall, it's the low pressure that is in the ascendancy. And um, that's the 500 millibar height is on from the Arctic of the North Pole view down again. Lots of below average heights, loads of low pressure in the uh, Atlantic and into much of Europe as well. Bed the blocking signal up towards Greenland. Higher pressure right over on the eastern side of Europe and down into southern Europe. That will be bringing up some warmer air probably into the east of the southeast of Europe. So here's our temperature anomaly for uh, this week, and it's significantly cooler or colder than average for Scandinavia and for the Nordic countries. So again, Norway, um, Sweden, Finland, all coming out cold average, also Denmark as well. UK and Ireland are a little bit below average for temperatures, especially in the north as well, and down in Spain, Portugal, a bit below average, you bear some of the parts of France too. Northern France is milder though as is below countries, much of Germany. And then the real warmth is across these more southern and eastern parts of Europe. So again, we see that between the Black Sea and the Asiatic, we've got temperature anomalies going up to, um, I think we got up to like 10 degrees above average. So really, really warm, actually. And uh, through uh, other eastern parts of Europe, so like Ukraine and into Poland as well, um, and around the Balkans to see uh, above average temperatures there, 3 to 6 degrees or 6 to 10 above average quite widely. So clearly the warmest air is in the east and the coolest air is in the north and the northwest this week. Uh, Precipitation-wise, we look like that. So most areas are wet and average, actually, especially so for these more western parts of Europe. So again, through Ireland, the UK, France, into much of northern Spain, Portugal, low countries, Belgium, Netherlands, into Germany, uh, wet and average there, and also down into Italy as well, above average precipitation, above average rainfall there. Of course, we'll probably be snow over the mountains and alpine regions. And then we get up into Scandinavia, and it's wetter than average through southern parts of Sweden, and uh, into the south of Norway as well, and into some southern parts of Finland, around the Baltic Sea states, the Black the Estonian lift rain. Of course, where it's cold, then that's not just rain. Some of that will be snow as well, particularly over more mountainous areas. But we're getting late on in the, into the year now, so... And that could deliver some stinking snow, even to like southern portions of Sweden and whatnot, to more uh, populated areas. A little bit drier than average show through parts of Norway, maybe. And then the eastern side of Europe, it's actually a little bit above average for precipitation, but not as wet as it is further west. That's the influence of that ridge of high pressure city to the east and the southeast, of course. Week 2 will be the 6th to the 13th of October. So the trough of low pressure gets pushed eastwards, actually. So trough of low is going over onto the east side of Europe with a ridge building out into the Atlantic or mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland and Iceland. That brings the wind into more of a north or a northeasterly, maybe, across those northern and western parts of Europe. The 500 millibar heights looking like that. Again, we see the mid-Atlantic ridge here extending up towards Greenland and Iceland. Trough of low pressure is across northern, central, western parts of Europe. The gab winds coming in from a north or a northeasterly direction, there potentially through the western, northern parts of Europe. 
So cold average widely across the west of Europe next week from the 6th to the 13th of November. Big change of what we've had through the autumn so far. We see well, widespread below average temperatures through most of Scandinavia. Again, going down in towards the UK and Ireland, into France, the low countries, Germany, even as far east as um, western Poland, uh, below average through there. And then down into the Mediterranean, yes, we see but Spain, Portugal, has cooled and average temperatures that extends into the central part of the Med too, so from the Balearic Islands of Mallorca, Mallorca, Ibiza, and into Corsica and Sardinia as well. Cold and average temperature. Cold and average around the Alps will deliver significant snow there. I would have thought. Further east, it's uh, above average still, so this far east and southeastern part of Europe sees above average temperature, especially around the Black Sea and northwards in towards eastern parts of Ukraine. And into uh, southern and western parts of Russia, there we have a temperature only of around 3, 6 degrees above average. Greece and Turkey also coming out with above average temperatures next week. So that's the place to go to get a little bit of warmth, maybe. Uh, go, to, uh, go, to, go to Crete, somewhere like that. Um, precipitation wise, yes, it's not western average, especially in more eastern regions, though. So, um, the trough is being pushed eastwards, of course, next week. So, it turns wetter through the eastern and southeastern portions of Europe, especially again around the Asiatic and the Balkans. With temperatures lowering, there might be some amounts of snow coming through uh, during uh, there as well. And then further west was some above average rainfall still left through France, in northern parts of Spain and Portugal, but not as unsettled, not as wet as it is this week. And up into Scandinavia, we see, well, anyway, up in Nordic regions, we see that Norway, <coughs> I'm so sorry, but we see Norway is um, a little bit drier than average, but still slightly above average precipitation around the Baltic Sea states and up into parts of Finland, maybe. Spain and Portugal is also beginning to uh, dry out a bit, as is southern parts of France into the Côte d'Azur. And then week three will be the 13th to the 20th of November. Still looking unsettled across most parts of Europe. Still with a trough of low pressure uh, dominating in uh, many areas. The 500 millibar heights also placing that trough of low through particularly Western Europe, actually. Uh, we have got a ridge, though, but still there over on the east side of Europe. So that presumably will continue to bring up warm air into more southern and eastern portions. Temperature anomalies still look below average here through uh, Scandinavia and back into the UK and Ireland as well, just into the far north of Germany and the low countries, most southern parts of France and like Spain, Portugal, a little bit cooler there. And then you can clearly see that uh, in the east and the south east, that's where the above average temperatures are. So again, especially around the Black Sea, going down towards Greece and Turkey, back to the Balkans, have above average temperatures for there. So a proper northwest south east split, the northern. And uh, western regions are cooler than average, the southern and eastern regions are um, warmer than average in the third week. And as far as precipitation is concerned, still very unsettled in many areas. Above average precipitation through the UK and Ireland, into the low country, into France and all parts of Spain, also into Germany and extending over onto the east side of Europe as well. Not particularly wet down the southeast of Europe too. So quite usual to have uh, uh, the northwest and the southeast Europe looking um, quite wet. We do see it's driving average for Norway into the far north of Sweden. And that's still just a little bit on the drier side down towards southern parts of Spain and Portugal. But a largely wet scene actually there through week three. Week four will be the 20th to 27th of November. And now the signal is weakening. So I'll just put in a couple of question marks because it's not all that obvious what's going on. Although there is like a trough of low in the far southeastern portion of Europe into the east of the Med. The 500 millibar height show uh, a ridge across the far south and also into the eastern part of Europe. Probably going to be, going to be some low pressure, so it probably going to be some low pressure still through there, I would have thought in reality. Temperature normally is still a little bit cooler than average or cold average through Scandinavia and maybe close to the UK, Ireland and France. So overall, I mean, it's week still because it's week four, but I think overall still probably on the cool side or the cold side for the north. The west of Europe are probably still on the warm side for these eastern and southern parts of Europe. And as far as the precipitation anomaly is concerned, 
Uh, again, we can see, but most areas still looking a little bit on the wetter side, if anything, especially if it be central regions, maybe a little bit drier down in the far south and in the extreme north. Week 5, well, that's your third day look ahead. Uh, we'll just go for weeks 5 and 6 data before we go. So week 5 being 27th of November to the 4th of December. Some higher pressure appearing then towards Spain and Portugal. Could that start to bring a bit of a return of the westerlies, or a westerly flow anyway, into the west of Europe, on about 500 millibar heights. Not really apparent what's going on with that word. And then, um, precipitation is warming up a little bit, so still a bit cool amps around there, Biscay, the rest of Portugal, but otherwise, maybe hinting at going a little bit milder there, right at the very end of the November into start of December. And um, precipitation for week five. Again, we see perhaps the influence of some higher pressures from the Azores, just getting back towards France, um, Spain, Biscay, etc. Lower pressure up here. It looks like it's reverting back to a flatter westerly type flow there. Just in time for winter, of course. <laughs> and then week six will be the fourth to the 11th of December. And again, not especially apparent what's going on. Let's put it in a question mark again. Um, oh, we've got some high pressure towards France, Spain, Portugal, and in the Atlantic through here. A little bit of high pressure towards the, Bal the, Bal um, the Baltic Sea as well, and northwestern parts of Russia. 500 millibar heights. Well, that looks quite interesting, actually. So, above average heights around Scandinavia and uh, into the far northeast Europe, we'll be trying to get wind into the east. Um, but uh, we probably have low pressure still coming through here, though. That's the only thing. Uh, with that, but anyway, the temperature anomaly. So, again, weakening signals, also a little bit uh, mild average in this south eastern part of Europe, still a little bit cooler average through there, otherwise, not much of a signal read for precipitation. And then, finally, uh, uh, for temperature, final precipitation, and that's true as well, not, not much of a signal there uh, either. So, it starts getting rather sketchy when we get into uh, the end of November and into December. But before that, it looks like we're in for some pretty cold weather actually across northern and western parts of Europe over the next two or three weeks. Cold and unsettled will deliver some early snowfalls to northern Europe, I would have thought with that, particularly through uh, the Nordic regions. Again, in the eastern and the southeast part of Europe, that's where the warmth is going to be for the next two or three weeks as well, uh, across those southern and eastern and southeastern portions of Europe. Maybe just a snapshot of what Monday showed. Could look a bit different when we look at it again on Saturday with a UK and Ireland focus or next Tuesday for your extended European outlook. But if you enjoyed the forecast, please take you like, share and subscribe. And thanks so much for doing that. And back later on the 10th, 14th day for this one. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.